look at these guys. <laughs> these are the original rack paddle rackets. Look at how thin they are. Okay, and these are yours, right? Have you tried to play lately with these ones or not? Uh, not lately, but I know I can still remember the feel. Uh, <laughs> I just like... don't want to get the uh, damage my elbow or anything. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and we are all things paddle. Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Paddle Smash Academy. Today we're so happy and so thrilled to have Fernando Alarcon, former number one player in the nation and top five in the nation currently. So welcome to the channel, Fernando, and please tell us, how did you start this paddle journey? Pleasure to be here, guys. Um, started uh, in 89 when I was 11 years old. Paddle was, was uh, like a new sport in Latin America, and especially in Argentina when I was born uh, in Paraná, a town uh, called Paraná. And yeah, that's how that's how I started. Just playing, playing for fun, playing with friends. Uh, became super popular, and just I uh, took it from there. So there was you didn't play any other racket sports prior to that. No, no, uh, nothing before paddle. Paddle was the first uh, first paddle sport for wow. me. So how did you get here in the USA? So uh, always wanted to uh, come and, and go to college or university in, in the states, and um, I. Um, end up getting a scholarship for, for tennis, actually. So I had to transition into, into the tennis world, uh, the opposite of what you see nowadays where, where a lot of the, the players. That, that's a first, right? <laughs> I mean, we always hear the opposite, yes. you know, people from right. tennis going to paddle, you know? So how was that transition? I mean, what, how, did you, how did you go from paddle to tennis? Those are two different games. Well, I got picked because I could play in doubles. I could serve in volley, mm. but uh, but yeah, I can tell you that basically I was playing playing paddle on a on a tennis court, <laughs> right? A chip so, and charge, and yeah. So were you you volleying, and people were like, "What's that?" Because <laughs> people baselining at that time, just baseline, baseline, right? And exactly. You, and you were volleying, and you were doing bandejas and people were like, "What is that?" Right? It was fun, <laughs> fun, fun time. So, but let me ask you. So you said you were serving in volley. How did you learn to serve tennis serve? Because it's it's different to paddle serve. Yeah, and but in a way, I had to adjust and, and learn it, and you know, and how to actually had a good kick serve and a, and a good flat first serve. So the portrait, the portrait <laughs> serve. But you learned it at the university. Uh, I I played here and there last year before going. I started training a little bit in tennis because okay. I knew I was going to be on a scholarship. But I was really focused on the academics. Um, That's uh, yeah. great. So mm -hmm. what school? What school was it? Uh, Lindenwood University in, in St. Louis. Um, I uh, ended up staying there for like seven or eight years, uh, studying goes through a couple of master's degrees in, in finance and uh, really focused on, 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 on the academics more than the tennis. I, I knew tennis was not my, my thing. But uh, unfortunately at the time, there was very, I mean, non-existent pet paddle was not, Right. You know, it's not, it's so, not there yet. So did you try to look for any paddle clubs or any type of group when you were at the university? Just, you know, just because you're curious? I did. I did. I did a lot. And um, in, in, in 08, I ended up going uh, um, to Mexico to play. I started, I, I missed it so much. I, w I wanted to play and I, I played every time I went back to Argentina. But but uh, for, for there was a, a big, big lapse for me since... Um, 99, I want to say until 2013 that I didn't, I didn't touch a paddle basically. Wow. So, wow. so when you went really back to play, where, where did it come back to you very quickly or did it, you were a little rusty and had to, yeah. you started playing a little tennis, but then you wasn't sure about paddle or like, you know, back and forth. Rusty for sure. <laughs> had to kind of like, <laughs> but, uh, but it was good. It was good. I went to a couple of tournaments in Mexico and then I connected with, with someone in, in the Houston area was interested in, um, in uh, opening paddle courts on on an existing uh, tennis facility, mm -hmm. a beautiful facility, and that's how we uh, and then we end up, end up moving and, and taking the family to go to to wow. Houston. So how how long after you graduated did that happen? Um, I want to say that yeah, that was 2013. I graduated in in 2008, so it took me. I worked for about five years doing okay. business development. Yeah. Um, but you know, I wanted my, I, I knew that my thing was just, just to be oh. in sports. Yeah. Wow, that's that's awesome. So now let's talk about the big thing that happened just recently. Now you are a Pan American champion. So tell us that whole experience. How was it from the first day until holding that trophy? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, I mean, we had a an unbelievable week in in Mexico in Cancun with the entire uh, team USA. Um, Congrats to everyone in the team and, 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 and everyone else that, that supported us. Uh, 
a lot of fun. I mean, individually, I got third place in, uh, in my division. But as a team, we were able to obtain, I mean, we, we pretty much we could say we made history uh, yeah. this past week, uh, getting, taking, you know, beating Argentina and, and Brazil and, and that came in third so place. So you guys collected the, the, the most points, right? Correct. Out of your whole yeah. group. That's yeah. amazing. That's the first time for USA. I think that everybody's probably surprised, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that they were. We were a little bit surprised when they announced that it was official because <laughs> we were something. counting points and it was a lot of levels for men's and, and for the women, and, and we did. So tell us a little bit how how's the, form, the format works of the Pan American. So for this type of uh, a tournament, uh, what, what they do is they have different divisions, uh, and then so you have, you're able to put two teams per division, and then if you if you get first, second, or third place, you're adding points to, to the overall count. Um, and so you, we actually play groups first. Uh, in, in my case, we, uh, we had uh, Brazil, uh, Paraguay, and, and the first one uh, was Chile. So we beat all three and we end up going straight uh, to semifinals for, having, for being first in our group. And unfortunately, we lost against Mexico in the semifinals. Uh, but again, it was so much fun. So who is your partner? Partner was uh, a 17-year-old. Wow. <laughs> Vini Di, Di Francesco. So uh, <laughs> amazing player with so much talent. And we'll, I'm sure you, you're going to hear a lot that name in the future. He's, is he American? I mean, born He's and American. raised here? He was born, he was born in, in the U.S. Uh, he, currently, he lives in Argentina. He's been training there. Oh. Uh, and um, and uh, funny that uh, he wrote me yesterday. He said, I'm already training uh, <laughs> in Corrientes to another state. He went to, wow. yeah. So, oh, wow. But you're going to hear that name. He's, uh, he's a very talented kid. And how, how was that moment when you guys find out about what were you doing and how, how did you find out that you became now you're the, the most champion? points? Yeah. Collect the most points. So um, we went out to eat with with the entire team, not not too far from from the club, and then someone texted us. It was official that we had won, so we're already That's, celebrating with a few. I, I saw the I saw the reels and 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 you know the content there, and I saw USA flag with everybody going crazy. It was, must have been so with paddle. Right, so it must have been so amazing, you know. It was, it was. So, so now uh, I know you pay, you had the honor and the pleasure to represent the U.S. in the World Cup, uh, Dubai, right? Correct. Yeah. How, how was that? Um, it was, uh, it was uh, actually in, in Qatar. Oh, Qatar. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was. Uh, I mean, that was something uh, unique because you have the best players in the world in just one facility. I mean, you don't know. Uh, what match to to go and watch? Because, <laughs> and, and you learn so much, and and you get uh, you know, uh, it was a little bit uh, challenging for the U.S. We still have a like a young team when it comes to to paddle, with um, but uh, hopefully in the future we can do you know start building a team and, and do do better. But uh, it's amazing. Uh -huh. Did you play against any top you know world paddle tour players? Uh, yeah, uh, a few of those. Uh, the main one was Paquito Navarro. Oh, wow. So, so you play against, to play against him. Yeah, he was uh, kind enough to give us a couple of games <laughs> here and there. So, so let me ask you from, from the, the, the playing point of view, what is the big difference? Is there a big difference or what, what do they do different compared to you guys? Well, um, I think the, the main, main difference is that they're, they're truly professional players, right? Uh, if you, if I had to describe myself, I would be, I don't know, maybe semi-professional when it comes, because I play some events that are professional, but for the most part, what we, we do here and, and for the level that we had, we don't, we don't train enough to be, to, to consider, and, and especially at my, my age, right? Um, you're, you have a lot of kids nowadays playing and they take it very seriously and they're, they're truly athletes, uh, on, on every they do nutrition, they do physical training, they have, you know, they have support and they have a team behind them. So uh, that's, that's the main difference. You can tell that the training, I mean, we, we have a group of talented players, but the, the difference on the court is going to show when they're playing at the highest level. So, so things have changed like kind of like tennis, right? Where they're incorporating, working out, you know, uh, being more athletic and, and contributing that to pedal as well, right? 
that's where you get young guys smashing, moving around. That's just different. Yep. Totally different. Paddle is, 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 is changing fast and it's becoming a, a, a lot faster than what, what we used to play back so, in the day. So, so when you play with these Paquitos and all that, these guys, are they technically better? They're physically better? I mean, what, what did you see any big difference? Do they play the 30-40s and the 40-30s differently? What, what was the major differentiator? Well, technically, they're all... Technically and tactically, I mean, on, on every aspect of the game, they're, they're, they're there for a reason. They're complete players. They, they're very good at everything that they do. So, yes, they're all very... And what it, it comes down to is that they're, they, they have a level of consistency that it's very hard to match. Really? We can play a great, great point. You can win a few good points, but it's very hard to do that, you know, on a continuous basis throughout two sets or... That's why if you have to that, play three again. That's what makes a difference, right? That's that's kind of like, to me, the main. I mean, they're going to play every rally 20 points. We get to five or six, and then we start, okay. you know, we, we could miss or we could lose a point. So they uh, they have mentally, they're prepared to play really long rallies. And and, and that's when the, the training kicks in and they don't, they just don't miss. Really? So basically it's about they don't make unforced errors. That's, That's it. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not like they're more powerful or anything like that. It's just they that too. They're also <laughs> more powerful. <laughs> they're also more powerful. And they can hit the, the ball consistently <laughs> by good. three or by four. Yeah. <laughs> and they, yeah. And Paquito would do it in kind of like slow motion just wow. to show you that he is in total control. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of fun. All right. So now you played Pan American games before. So, did, did you see the difference from before to now when it comes to the level of the USA? Uh, well, in the absolute, um, yes, a lot of times they don't bring their, their A team, so to speak. They don't, they don't bring the, you know, uh, Sanjo and, and, mm. and, and all those players. But uh, Pan American, it's, it's really, the level is it's really high. Um, world championships I played in uh, for the seniors in, in, in Vegas, um, that's also was really high level. But again, you don't have... Um, in, in that division, you don't have the professional type, so it's it's more. I mean, it's playable. Like, it was playable. Yes. Okay. So so tell us a little bit for, um, for the viewers and listeners how the Pan American works because I know they have three different Pan Americans, right? So they have the one that play in Caracas with the Lampertis and the Chingotos, and then you have the one you just play now, and then we have the seniors, right? In different right. divisions. Correct. The absolute. Uh, uh, the absolute is the one that yes, the professionals it's, it's play. It's the open, and 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 anyone can play. And then you have an amateur division where professionals are not allowed to play, and they involve a, a lot more levels. So it allows people from different different levels to to participate. So you can bring you know you are playing in different um, levels. Go from from second, third, fourth, I think uh, fifth. So. Um, it's a it's a it's a different setup. The um, the absolute is just your best players, period, in, in in your country, and you bring eight players, you play three matches, and then um, and three games, and uh, and you know you have to win two out of three. And did you play the absolutes as well? Uh, yeah, we played last year in Mexico. Um, we actually did uh, pretty good. I, I partnered up with uh, with uh, with pa pa Paquito Rivero. Uh, from Houston, we did uh, really. Uh, we had really fun, fun matches, and um, but again, that that level is the best players of every country. But this year you didn't play. In this Caracas. year we weren't able to bring a team for. Okay. Not not not, not exactly sure. We couldn't tell you what the reasons were, security and, and safety reasons for the team. Okay. We we end up not not bringing a team out there. And so you guys didn't play this year, but now you're playing the seniors. Tell us a little bit about the seniors and all that. How's that? Um, so the same same concept for the seniors. You have the amateur event where you have a lot different levels, and you can bring a much larger groups and allow a lot of um, you know and enthusiast paddle players that are not you know necessarily uh, of good level, but they can still there and, and compete and have a, a okay. tremendous fun time. Yeah, that's going to take place in in Brazil next week. Uh, we're ready to go. Uh, we have a, a, a great team, and it's going to be it's going to be as fun. So going back to what you were saying about the, the one that you just played, I, we heard that one of your players got uh, sort of removed or kicked out because he was sort of like a half professional or something like that. 
Mm -hmm. uh, yes. He was playing A1 and all that. So what, what was that? Uh, that, that, that yes, drama, he got voted out. He, he, <laughs> he, he should probably never been in the team to in the first place. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, uh, fortunate that, that, that he was there and he was not allowed to. But he was a professional player playing for yes, the US? Yes, he's under uh, a few contracts for, for different things. So you, that he was considered, you know, to, I mean, he, he's a truly professional player, right? And, and that is just, just not allowed. Mm -hmm. so, so now uh, let's talk because we, we got that question asked uh, uh, previously. When, how would you define a professional paddle player? Meaning, uh -huh. how, how do the association makes or the federation makes the decision? Okay, you're a professional, you're you're not. At the end of the day, uh, it was you know uh, they, they they took votes on it and then they voted. Um, but I mean, in my in my opinion, somebody that it's able to you know to um, make money and make a living out of playing the sport that would be considered, uh, you know, a, a professional paddle player. Now, there's a lot of people that play in professional tournaments, but they do something different to make a living. And then, you know, that that, that could be considered, again, semi-professional or, 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 or something more of that kind. And um, But at the highest level, and, and especially these kids that, that train, you know, every day, Uh, anywhere from three to six hours, and then and 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 that's what they do, and and they they um, they they work uh, very hard to, to become professional players if, if they're not yet, and that's what I define as a as a pro pro player, right? Uh, I mean, we could say back in the day when you get your first professional points, that's when yeah. you actually become a, a, a professional player, or when you get your first contract and you're making money. Uh, But but yeah, uh, in this case, uh, every all the delegates from every team they they voted to see where, whether he was qualified as a professional or not. And, they, and and that happened only to the American team, or there were other countries that had the same issue. Yeah, to my knowledge, it was just us. Mm -hmm. That's strange, isn't it? Or or a male bias probably. It is. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't think Putting it's biased. I, I don't think it's it's biased. No, but, but, I mean but, the federations. I, I mean, you know. It. Yeah, but I, I do think uh, that the, so that the point that the, the the point that they make is it's not our responsibility to tell you who's a professional, and who's not. If you bring your players, you can put your players on your list. We're not going to verify all the players that you bring. If the rules are clear and you cannot bring professional players, if you bring one, it gets kicked out. So then they get that's their. Uh, argument? Did, did they get penalized because the rules are that, and now they're trying to break the rules? You know, did they get penalized or? That's a that's a good question. Um, I don't I, I don't think nothing happened other than who was uh, that I've heard that he was were penalized. Uh, now, do you think there's other players that did enter that they didn't catch? And no, for the most part, um, I mean, you had. I mean, in, in, in the highest level, which is the one that I play, you had really good players, but, you know, again, not professional players that live off of a paddle and, and are training on a, on a regular basis. I mean, either uh, players that had been professional at some point, but now they're retired and they, they, they're playing the amateur. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Okay, so now you were number one for what about in the here in the USA for about eight years, right? So you got to see a lot of different players. Out of those eight years, how did you see that level uh, of, of paddle uh, uh, a change? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I, I could say that from 2013 to uh, the first two years, uh, really the, the, the tour and the people that travel and everything was not really big. Um, you had a good uh, good number of uh, good players in, in the Houston area because that's where it actually had at the time a, a, a larger community than what you see today in, in, in Miami or in, in South Florida. Um, But then it started getting more competitive and, and we started seeing obviously a lot of really good players coming from, from the tennis world. Uh, some have stayed, some have not, and, and you know, and it, it, I, you don't see them on, on the tour anymore. Uh, 
but I expect that I suspect that uh, in the in the in the coming years so you're gonna start seeing that the level's gonna continue to to to, to get better and and there's gonna be even gonna be more people coming from from other countries and participating in in in, in our, our 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 highest level here of competition. No, that's another good point. Have you seen different um, players from different countries start playing, competing really well in, in here in the USA? Versus, let's say, at the beginning, which probably were a lot of South Americans and and, and Spaniards, right? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. You're, it's happening, and it's going to happen even more. Uh, there's there's really um, players that locally, either in Argentina or Spain, because the level is it's 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 the highest level in the sport. They're not gonna be able to to play or compete at the highest level in their own countries. So they're looking for opportunities of, you know, or of competing here uh, in the U.S. Now you see other people come from other countries here participating in the USA, um, just saying USPA or any other tournaments. Do you see that's a, a good thing for the U.S. Uh, where uh, the people who are native here are have to force themselves to get better? Or, or do you see them taking spots there that the, the USA players could have? Uh, no, then. no, definitely a, a good thing, uh, for sure. It's only going to help uh, to continue to to grow the sport and to you know and and even if you you if some players that have played professional in the past come here and and they take uh, the number one spot, I mean I think it's it's a positive thing. Um, it's it's how you do it and how you organize and and, and, and having clear rules, but I think uh, in the end it's is is very very positive. Now, now, how do you see that gap? How big do you see that gap between the native people here playing and then uh, the people that are coming from other countries playing when it comes to level? When it comes to level, um, I, I think that the, the main main difference is is the training again, right? You can tell you can tell when it play, uh, somebody. It's you can tell what I can tell when any player has been training a lot. It, it shows on the court. It shows how you move. It shows how you how many balls you miss, and, and you can tell if somebody's been playing lately or he hasn't played for six months. And this is kind of like the same. I mean, when you when when they come here, and you can tell that they've been competing a lot at at, at a faster pace and, and all that, and it, it, it makes a difference. Playable because we've we've in 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 more than one occasion, I've had the opportunity to beat really good players that are professionals or semi professionals, uh, um, and and in a in and qualifiers for the first World Paddle Tour that were, that were played here, in, I, I believe it was 2017. We got to play uh, in Houston against uh, against uh, a player named Nani, who's at, at some point I think uh, fifth in, in in the World Paddle Tour, and we beat him. So right. when when they play with somebody local or when they play with somebody of level lower level, if we do very well, we can you know sometimes match their their, their level of play. Uh, but in the long run, they, they, they always have that, you know, the, the, the history of playing against really good at a high level in, uh, and they're better. They're, I mean, that's, that's a reality. So, so a question that I, you know, I've seen you play uh, quite a few matches. Uh, when you play with the younger players, you know, the Nico Agritelli's, the Luis Estrada's, and, you know, they're younger, they're like 10, 20 years younger. Do you see a big difference in, in this? What do they do different? I mean, is youth a major factor compared to experience or not? Um, yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's always going to be, I think, that that's going to be the case in, in every sport. Um, once they get to a certain level where they, you know, they have everything else when it comes to the, the, the strategy of the game. And when they learn and they're comfortable, somebody coming from, from the tennis world that plays paddle for five years, they're going to they're gonna be good for sure. And, and you know, and being young, I mean, you're going to recover faster. You're going to be able to maybe uh, last longer if you have a, a long, long game. So, yeah, it definitely does make a difference. And, and then on the other hand, you had... Uh, players more like, more like me that have been playing for a long longer time and, and and we know how really quickly how to change a strategy in a match when we see that it's not going the way we we wanted to go and so we can make adjustments that, that you know the experience that, yeah, experience that's when the experience come uh, come in place and then you play more relaxed the the, the, the points that, that, that you need to play or you play better when when you're a little bit against against the ropes and that that 
that that plays in in favor in, in for for us for so so let's talk about these babies babies vintage babies that you brought right here look at guy look at these guys <laughs> these are the original rack paddle rackets look at how thin they are okay and these are yours right yeah, this are, so you actually pay with this ones, and they're so heavy, they it's are. ridiculous. So, so what, what is the material made out of? It says fiberglass. Is that just the outside? And yeah, the inside play, is that play wood? Just play, play wood. wood. <laughs> wow. That's just, just play, play wood. wood. I mean, imagine playing with this uh, nowadays. It, it's incredible. Have you tried to play lately with this ones or not? Uh, not lately, but I know I can still remember the feel. Uh, <laughs> I just like, don't want to get the... Uh, damage my elbow or anything. <laughs> wow. So but, um, the transition is huge from this to what we have now. Do you see it even changing more? Um, yes, uh, but not not at the same pace. I mean, I, I've seen, and, and I can tell you a little bit on how we went from, from this paddle to yeah, what we please. have today. Please. So this, these are uh, 12 millimeter uh, wood. Those are the very first ones that, that you could get from every brand. They were all about the same and they probably came from an, another sport. If I don't, it could have been uh, maybe uh, uh, platform tennis or, or other, other sports and that's what was available to play at the time. So the evolution of these paddles is that they went from 12 to 14 to 16 to 18 in wood uh, and that's that's the the highest that you would see a, a wooden paddle at 18 so, millimeters. So what made so the it was difference? Thicker. But what, what what you mean for the viewers is like the thickness of the wood, right? right. So the thickness. So how, this one is 12. That one is 12. 12 millimeters and, right here. So one? it went higher and higher and higher. This one is also 12. Those are yes. the very first one. So what made and, the difference when they went thicker? Well, you had a little bit more power, uh, okay. and uh, they started using different type of wood, so it was not as hard. Mm. And this had to be hard because at 12 millimeters, you would you would break it. Yeah, uh, so especially yeah, when fair, you hit it as it smash or something. Exactly. And look look at the strap, how it will you know, yeah, cut your circulation on your wrist. You already, I mean. you already broke one. <laughs> 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 but these are, look at how small it is. Oh, I mean, man. it's incredible. It's sticking your hand yeah, through you there. Rope, you got rope burn. Yeah. <laughs> so and after the, the 18, then they started uh, the, the having foam and, and different type, types of... Uh, they call uh, epoxy uh, or yeah. yeah. So how did that change? Was it difficult for people playing already with these rackets, or was it like, and was it a huge difference? Like, wow, this is a totally different game almost. It it changed the game literally. Uh, now the game was faster. Now you can hit the ball faster. Now the racket all of a sudden is lighter, and you can have more explosive volleys at the net, or you can hit the ball hard from the back of the court. It it, it changed the game entirely, it, and and then. Those went from 18 all the way uh, to 38, which is what With we the, have the actual, today, yeah. right? And and um, and they've been evolving er, ever since. I can imagine for you guys going from here to a 38 like this thing, it was like holding. <laughs> did, did the weight change? Because you said they used other type of wood inside, maybe to be lighter or something. Was the weight a lot heavier or was it relatively close to the same? No, no, no. They, they can't. Uh, they were lighter, lighter rackets. Wow. Uh, and when they start coming up with the, the new ones, and and I remember because I was at a tournament with the first time I tried it, and I, I'll never forget playing in the final. And that's the first time I used one of the the new rackets, and uh, it was uh, you had so much power in your hand. So how many grams is this? Do you know, so oh, that was compare. This got to be what 500, 400. <laughs> it's it's close to four fifty, something right? like that. Wow. Look at that! Look at that! And I'm pretty exactly. good. Huh? Yeah. And, and what, what I love of this look, Sergio Dacchini was a major uh, yeah. tennis brand back mm -hmm. in the days in the late eighties, early nineties. Had a few and, shirts. <laughs> yeah. And then um, they they were doing a paddle racket. That's pretty pretty impressive. Yeah, I, I think they still are. I I, I don't know. I th or maybe they made a few, but I haven't. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't yeah. seen them too popular in paddle, but I think yeah. I've seen a few out there. Yeah. yeah. There's so many brands nowadays, and I'm, 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 I wouldn't be surprised if you see a, a Sergio Cecchini. A, right. So do you paddle. see the, the paddle even changing more? And, and if so, what do you think, it's, what are the, what do you think they're going to change? Um, I'm, I'm a little bit in, in, involved in the, um, yeah. Wilson, know, on, right? on the Wilson side. Yeah. Uh, I've been working for the past three or four years. Uh, well, let's talk about that. How are you? How are you involved with Wilson? Um, well, started uh, 
it's just like that. They asked me to do reviews uh, of their paddles. I uh, started working with the R&D. Uh, I've, I've been doing that for uh, four years now, I think. Uh, even with balls, trying different type of balls for altitude, for, for the weight, for all that. And that's kind of how my relationship started. And, uh, and it evolved to, to, for them to, to offer me to, be, uh, to use their, their brand and, and sponsorship as, as a player as well. Um, so it's, it's, it's been great right now. Um, they've uh we, we everything evolved into a, like a commercial or more, more business relationship where where they have um currently at the club ex- exclusivity to mm-hmm. sell their their products and and everyone's really happy they have one of the best battles in the in the market and they the thing with wilson is they conti- are continuously looking for ways to make things better and to you know uh not, not only for the game, but just to pr- protect and to absorb one of the things that they're, they're working is just to absorb a little bit more the impact of the ball so you don't, you in, in time, that translates into less injuries. So how, how involved are you in the research, research and development? Like, w- do they talk to you about it? Do they give you certain, you know, paddles that are not out there yet to try out and you, you kind of like l- let them know it's too heavy, the, the sweet spots here. What is that process and how are you involved in that? So the process is just they, they would come up with, um, with a, a new paddle. Let's say they're trying something uh, that it's a different shape mm-hmm. or a different material. It could be a different material as well. And so once they put it together and what they think it could be, they, they ship it to me. At this point, I want to think that I've, I've, uh, wrote reviews for them for more than 50, uh, wow. 50 paddles. Wow. So they use like yeah. a prototype. And yeah. Then and a lot of times I get to keep them and sometimes they, I, I, I have cool. to send them back. Uh, but they give you like all so black where you don't know what they're name all black. it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that goes for, for different products. Uh, they're, they're, you know, they, uh, they're, they're very strict when it comes to, you know, um, the, the privacy of what they're doing in, in R&D. And when it comes to the, the R&D, we uh, even are uh, uh, trying some some the protectors for the paddles that, that they're developing right now and testing. And, and you know, and then, um, and we also do it with, um, with, with some of our players. We, uh, we extend some, some uh, we allow them to use and do test uh, with, with a bunch of the paddles, and the, then we have like regular people writing reviews to see what what they what they think the paddle. Um, now, can you tell us uh, is there any new paddles coming out? Come on, there is there is a new line. Uh, there is a oh. new a new line. Uh, can you talk out, about it? Coming out. Um, no, not. <laughs> I want to speak for, for Wilson here. I want to be careful what I said, but but there is a new line coming out, a right. new Bella line, and yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, it's going to be soon. soon Beautiful. I played with the Bella, and they 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 did a pretty good job. Let me yeah. tell you, it's a good good racket. I mean, it's it's, beautiful. It yeah. looks really nice too. Yeah. You know, so nice racket. Very yeah, very yeah. impressive. It's, uh, the balance on the racket is is just unique, and then the feel also. It, uh, yeah. It's it's great. They they've done it. They they really done a great job. And I think also the aesthetics. Uh, it's, it's a paddle that we've been we've been selling. It's been selling amazing, and people right. people love it. Right, right. Okay, so let's get back into business. I wanna because you're an entrepreneur, you know. Um, so how did you get to working in Houston? And then, you know, uh, well, I know that they sold the company, right? And then, so how did you get to Ultra Paddle? How, how did how did that happen? Um, because you are the one of the founders of Ultra Paddle, right? Correct. Uh, um, always wanted to, you know, be in the, in, involved in the, in the business because that's what, that's what I, I I do all day uh, is just to, to be involved with paddles. So um, always wanted to have a club of, of 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 my own. And when I said my own, I uh, I'm saying of our own yeah, because. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but it's your baby, though. Claudia. But it's your baby, though. You yeah, know, it's also Claudia's baby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> she, she hasn't been instrumental. She has been a lot more than that. She has been uh, the person you. responsible um, 
I'm sure in in a way more than me, maybe me a little bit more in the sports part, but yeah. made me her more as a as a business woman. Yeah. And so to uh, to tell our, our, our viewers who's Claudia. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very important. I mean, uh, Claudia. Claudia is my wife. Um, and um, don't 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 ask how long we've been married. Uh, <laughs> She, you put uh, yourself has, on the spot she, there. She keeps all the data. I mean, uh, so, so what does she do uh, for you? I mean, you guys are a team, I assume. You know what I'm saying, right? And you guys work together. So you, We're you know, a right? team. We always work together. We 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 do really well together. That's uh, great. And and she does she does so much. I mean, she does. I mean, she does uh, <laughs> almost <laughs> everything related to the administration, the marketing, God. the God. you know. Uh, following Great, up awesome. with, with the vendors, uh, every aspect of the business, she knows it and she knows it very well. And she does; she's done an amazing job, which in turn allowed us to um, to open our our own facility. And 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 what I can tell you, like in a, in, a, in, a, in a, that that we've been we've been we did really good, and when and just the first year that since since we've been we've been open, and that we will continue to. To contribute to grow the sport and 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 to to have more clubs because at the end of the day, having more clubs is what's going to take the the sports to to the next to the next level. So let's talk a little bit about Ultra. How many courts? What type of courts? Um, where is it? And um, and those details like that. Yeah. So um, Ultra uh, started a, a couple of years back. Uh, we um, we had a, a lot of difficulties at the, the beginning the first during the first year and a half to to try to open with 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 permits uh in with the city but uh we're able to to get it done and actually open doors this year in in february um we are showing every month uh grow and 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 more reservations and more people coming nice, in and playing nice. and um i think we've been i mean i don't want to Pat myself on the back, but uh, I think we've be, we've done a great job when yeah. it comes to the um, educational part of it and the teaching and and the lessons and organizing ev- organizing events that are you know that people uh, for the most part end up so really happy and and they come back and 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 that at the end of the the day it shows and and again all I mean a lot of that goes to goes to Claudia for for putting a lot of this programs uh with me and, and events that uh that makes makes us what, what what we are today so let's talk a little bit about the permits because uh, a lot of people that we have here want to open up gloves right or they're maybe in the process of or oh, there's this there's that and they're kind of stuck or having difficulty with with permits i mean i know it's a long process here right and in 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 uh in dade county you know so um, what was that process? And, and you were one of the few that were able to do it, you know, where a lot of these people weren't able to do it. I know, I know. And I've seen, uh, I mean, like you said, a lot of people interested in it. It's not as easy. You have to understand uh, the market, the city, and how things work all around. You have to be able to, to invest uh, the time and, and money that it will take you know, all the way to, to, to finally being open and, and getting that, that CO for your building so you can open the doors because that's, uh, that's, that's key. Right. And, yeah. um, it's, uh, it, when, when it comes to the whole process is, I think the the main difference is whether you, if you have to build something or you, or if you have a facility, you're able existing to find a property existing. that it's existing that has. The for instance, restrooms, bathrooms, mm, and yeah. and everything that you need to be up to code. If you don't have that, and you have to build, then you're going to go through a, a series of inspections uh, that that are going to, no matter what, they're going to take. You know, they're going to yeah, take yeah. time to to do and to get approved to, until you can you can open. What, what, what would you say is the average length uh, of from starting point, submitting the permit to getting approved, is that six months, eight months, ten months? Yeah, I think it's a, <coughs> a little bit more than six months. It's always six months. It's, it's always going to be a little bit more. It takes t- again time to go through each office in the in the city to get permits for different things, and that could be parking or it could be access. It could be many many things, but it, it, in the end, 
it depends on what kind of facility you're doing. If it, whether you're putting only four courts and something minimal, and, and but if the capacity and you you expect to have more courts, then you're going to have more people in the city. is going to ask for for more things. Um, and, and, and I'm thinking I'm no less than than a year. Really? Be, so yeah. 12 months? Would you say? At least. Oh, I, I think that I would feel confident to do something like that, and uh, that, that that if you do things right and you know what you're doing, you could potentially get it done. In in in, in, the, in but it's not guaranteed. Because you have the experience. Somebody coming yes. has never done it. You can add another fifty percent to that. No, at but, least. but it's, a, it's it's good for you know new investors <laughs> yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. Hey guys, you know hold, hold on your horses. Not because I want to open a product yeah. club and in a week I will have it ready. So oh, yeah, that's a good point, and it happens a lot because like I mean at least for me with the experience coming from Latin America. You could literally open a, a Palo club if you have a court. You mount the courts on a, on 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 a space, and you'll have a business. You can start your business. There's regulations for, I mean, they they have them, but, but they're more relaxed loose. and and uh, and yeah, they're super loose. And and you can open in a month. You could have a a, a club up and running. Yeah. If you have, a, but here's not the case. Yeah. It's just not gonna. All right, all right. I mean, uh, finding a location or acquiring a location that already has a sports. Uh, a sports uh, zoning would probably be easier. And, right? and, and you think it's specifically Miami-Dade or it's the entire state of Florida? Um, yeah, no, I think it's it's just the city of Miami. There's a lot of construction right now. Yeah. There's a lot of buildings. So yeah. everything that you do, it takes more time. You're Backed always up. put in a queue and you have to wait until everyone else that is in front of you yeah. to finish. And maybe in other places is a lot faster. I wanna, I that would be my guess. Mm. And even in other states, like somewhere like Texas, you're going to have basically no code. So if you have five wow. acres in the back of your house, you could open four paddle courts. Yeah. And then you, you know, just get your business and you're good to go. So in that wow. sense, uh, it's it's different uh, everywhere you go. The, the, let's talk about a little bit ultras uh, uh, programming. What, what do you guys offer uh, from clinics and things like that? And what, what do you guys are doing right now? Well, first, how, how many courts do you guys have? So, so we have three indoor courts and uh, full courts and five outdoor courts okay. and one indoor singles court. It's like the only one, I think. <laughs> yeah, Miami, yeah, I haven't it's seen the only one. one. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the space what was right and it made sense and 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 it's it's really working for us there's a lot of uh times where you know a, a dad would want to wait with one other want to play with one of their kids um or you know you have a couple all of a sudden they just want to hit or mm -hmm. maybe you can find uh, that extra fourth player that sometimes yeah. it's very hard to find yeah but you have your best friend and you want to go hit yeah. and train so People are liking it. So, what what type of court do you guys have there? So we have is is uh, the same court that you actually see in the tour uh, uh, that Paddle Galis produces. Paddle okay, uh, it's the uh, panoramic. Oh yeah, it's nice, uh, the nice. World Paddle Tour court nice. with uh, the Mondo turf. Uh, nice. We we knew from the beginning that that people wanted to experience uh, playing, you know, in a court that that bounced perfectly. And that protects your yeah. your your knees. And you wanted to play on that too, because you and have a I standard, right? That <laughs> so so let's talk about the programming now. So what, what do you guys offer at, at Ultra? So for programming right now, well, we we have quite a few options, and and what and, and and what I can tell you, well, I'll, I'll mention a few of them. We have uh, we have individual lessons that we do. We have group lessons. We have clinics during uh, the mornings and some in the in the evening. Um, we also have uh, a tournament with our, our own ranking that we do on Thursdays. And we have a, 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 a cardio clinic where you can come and, and run a little bit more for those who want to get a, you know, the workout and, 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 and burn, burn some calories. And so we got a, a, a right now um, a good, I want to say we're, we're, we're pretty good. We, we have as, as far as programs, but we're going to add a potentially in 2024 a couple more more things that people we think that people are gonna are gonna really like and and, and uh, one is one of them is gonna be called the shot of the week uh, where you can learn if you're interested in, cool. in doing that and that's I'm gonna do it personally because a lot of times I mean for for other reasons I haven't been able to be on court as much as I want because teaching is my, my, my passion but this one I'm gonna do it uh, myself and, and we're going to talk about tactics. And um, so that's coming. 
And there's also going to, we're going to have the Ultra League, which is a, a format that we put together uh, that's going to have its own ranking. You're going to be able to even get a rating from it, which is a big deal nowadays to know your rating. And the, the, this league that I've um, put together will be able to tell you exactly, I mean, or, or, or uh, really close to your, your rating, but based on, on your playing and nothing else. It's, it's trying to take based all the you, subjectivity out of it. Based on and you winning, pretty much. Based right? on you winning. So it's kind of like Platonic a little bit, right? I, I played Ultra um, uh, League. I, I really like it. It's really well, great. Well, yeah, it, 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 it's not quite the same. It's going to be an individual rating. Okay. Basically, I can tell you in, in two seconds uh, kind of how it's going to go down, but you will play individually with it in a court. Uh, in You will play one set with each one of the other players, and the one that has the, the, the best count for uh, when it comes to games is going to advance to a higher court, which allow you to play with better players the next the following week. If you lose your court, you go down. This it's it's the Smart. same concept as the ladder in tennis, but it allows you uh, to know exactly who's the best player on the court. And then when you go up, you're going to face uh, players uh, that are better than you supposedly in a, in a higher court, and then you have to do your best to try to stay in there. And, um, and then what, what allows is allows everyone, it involves everyone because now you're going to have eight courts playing at the, where the highest level could be somebody like a place open or competition level like me. But on court eight, you could have somebody that's intermediate and they can work. That's going to allow all the players to, you know, to say, well, now I have the chance to, to play up. Nice. That's, that's beautiful. Great. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah because... So, a couple of things. I mean, um, when are you starting the the shot of the the shot of the day or shot the? Yeah, the shot of the week is uh, we're going to start that uh, and starting in in January. Um, I'm, that's great. I'm, I'm traveling like uh, like we said. I'm going to to spend some time in in playing in in, in Brazil and then in Argentina. So I, I right. won't be around in December. Whenever you do that, uh, the, the shot of the week, you do the bandeja, please let us know because he needs to improve the shot, the bandeja. <laughs> yeah, so because, he because can who, go. Because who plays the bandeja? Most people play the vibora yeah. and he can't do the vibora. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> okay so so I, no, I no, wait, wait, let me, yeah, let me go, ask go, an, right, an, ahead, another go. question. So, um, have you ever, th I mean, are you guys thinking in doing uh, US USPA tournaments or um, red paddle tournaments or, or things like that at the club? Uh, we are, we are. Um, we want to have uh, one or two major events potentially this year uh, that, uh, that gives you points for, for the ranking for the USPA. We want to do that uh, for sure. Uh, we're... Um, but we want to do it right. We want to do it. We want to be able to, you know, to to make people happy at the same time. So we have to find a way, you know, when it comes to um, being able to say, OK, um, this is a tournament that's well organized and you're going to get this, this, this and that if you do well. And, and, and you know, have a little bit more when it comes to prices and all that that we don't. A lot of times but for people that have to travel and, all, and, and yeah. you travel and it's, 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 it's all an expense. So Beautiful. We'll, we'll try to do that. In that so respect. now I've heard you talk about uh, Houston a few times. So is that where the next club is going to be? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. Um, okay, so you talked about other clubs, right? Is that something you see in the future? So, so yeah, uh, there's, there's a few <laughs> major cities that we, where, where we would like, uh, obviously, to, to have a, a presence. Okay. Um, so where's your top five cities that you would, you would want to, uh, you know, put clubs uh, yeah. in, you know, in the future, in the next three years? Or uh, it could be Houston, it could be Dallas, it could be San Francisco. Um, we, we, we have an, uh, an idea what we want to do. Tampa, I think it's also. So how do you figure out where you're going to put the club? What analytics do you use to figure out to, you know, hey, the club is going to do better here than over there? So um, demographics is, is it's, okay. it's key, right? You have to understand uh, how many how many potential players you can get out of any given um, area. Um, the, the next thing is just can you are you able to find um, a space that that will allow you to do mm. the facility or type of facility that you want to do? Are you going to be able to do 
permittings or change the use in an area that is maybe not not recreational and stuff All like right. that. But um, but yeah, it's uh, we go. Um, uh, the way we do it is just we'll analyze any locations. And, and for the most part, we've had a lot of people coming to us. We don't have to go out there too much, but we've analyzed this year alone more than 20 clubs to, to, you know, to see whether an, an investment is, is viable to, to, right. to, to do it. And, and, and it could be, again, it could be any city is going to have uh, potentially space and, and the demographics that you're looking for. And to, is, to, to be able to have a, 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 you know, to generate good return on the investment. And is indoor a must or could it be indoor, outdoor, both or outdoor or does it, it matter? It, it could be both. And what, uh, I mean, currently what we're exploring is, is, is to find a way to, um, to have covered courts that are outdoors, that allow you to play outdoors oh. and you don't, you don't need or you don't have to have the cost of, of, mm. of renting or only a, an indoor facility with, you know that it's uh, it's uh, with air conditioning and stuff like that. They're pretty costly. So, so are you guys just looking for the business aspect of it, or are you guys also acquiring the asset as well? Uh, well, we we we're looking at both right now. Okay. I mean, uh, and and again, it, it's it's hard to answer that question in, in general because each each one of them is going to be so specific when it comes to the paddle. But but just to answer your question more 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 directly. Uh, yes, I mean I'm all about the indoor. The indoor, people love it. You can, you know, you're gonna play. You know, you're not gonna have this, especially here with the, with the heat and the rain. I mean, for Florida, it's I I, I would tell you if I open a club, it has it's, it's it, pretty, probably a, a must. A that's everywhere. You do a combination of both, but yeah, and then you have extreme weather, you know, up north, and uh, and so. Uh, I'm always looking for for indoor. So, what do you think the percentage is through the whole year that you lose um, when it comes to rain or weather? You know, when it comes to not being able to play on the court. Uh, if you have uh, eight to ten days of rain in the in the rainy season, um, uh, you you could. I mean, for a paddle as a business, you could you could lose like some some serious yeah. money right uh due to the rain and this year has been it's it's been raining a lot uh and that's when your your indoor accounts right come into place because uh whatever you're, you're going to be potentially full if there's other clubs that people you can't go to to the club that you normally go then but you have courts that are indoor somewhere when it rains most likely you'll be you'll be at full capacity during, during the rainy season season on the indoor uh, so it kind of makes up for the money that you lose. Okay, so that's why it's important going back to yeah. your, your questions to have something that it's a hybrid model where gotcha. you have indoor and outdoor. So if you just had outdoor, do you think you'll lose up about twenty percent um, of uh, of not being able to play because of weather? Um, I, I, it could it could be a little bit more than more? that. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Thirty, forty percent, yes. maybe in New England, yes. even fifty percent. That's right? what I would guess. Yeah. I mean, I, in, well, that's that's a lot. I that mean, is a lot uh, for, for yeah. so is investment obviously because you're going to invest maybe fifty to seventy five percent more doing an indoor and also the time. Uh, so is it you're saying it's well worth that than putting something outside and you yeah. know being a lot less to, to as an investment. Correct, and that's where it comes into place. What kind of lease you have? You have five yeah. years uh, with the. It's all about the numbers. Yeah. So Fernando, what, what is your highest achievement as a player? And as a professional paddle, and as a coach, and as a coach, uh, as a player, uh, I would uh, I would tell you that uh, when we play the last World Championship in Las Vegas for the seniors event in the thirty five plus, uh, where I, my partner at the time was Paco Rivero, we had a great run. We were expecting to, I mean, due to the level that the, the highest level of the competition, playing. 35 years old, we, 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 you know, we were guessing that we, we would be happy uh, going over the first or second round. We end up doing much, much better. We, we did uh, amazing after the first few days, our level kept rising and we kept on winning. Uh, we beat uh, Belgium, uh, Chile, Italy, and then we made it all the way. We won quarterfinals, uh, uh, and then, and then all the way into the semifinals, 
uh, against Argentina and we were able to take Argentina in two sets. So we had a great run. That was in a whole week of paddle at the highest level and in our best tournament. And unfortunately, we, we end up in second place uh, and, and also play the, the, the number one team from Argentina. But we took a set, so we came so close to being world champions wow. uh, in uh, you know in this uh, well in this done. type of event. So that wow. was our, uh, our our probably my highest achievement as, wow. uh, as a yeah. player. And how about as a coach? So highest achievement when it comes to awards and and things like that is um, I got uh, I I got this year in September uh, named. Um, International Master Professional, which is one of the, it is the highest uh, achievement that you, 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 could, you could get uh, as, a, as, a, as a paddle professional. Sounds good. He got, he got UB. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> no, you did it good. You yeah. did it good. So, so how many people, um, you know, get this and how difficult is it? And how did, how did you achieve that? So, so the, the RPP, the, the International Master Professional is an award that it, it's, it's given to somebody that has extensive um, experience in the competition and, and in the, not only competition, but on the educational part of the, the, the sports. And apparently I have uh, both uh, a vast experience with all these last years and in, in both and in, in, in there's only eight in, in the world that, uh, wow. that have achieved wow. the, the highest is, is really the, the highest level. And, um, in, and I'm being the only one in, in, in wow. the U.S. Right? Congratulations. You're Thank making you. a Julian jealous. Yes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> how does he I'm get one? <laughs> <laughs> so, so how often do they give this award? Is it every year or every couple of years? Because there's only eight. Uh, eight yeah, no. Uh, well, because in, in, I know they, they do it in tennis, and, and I don't really know how often they do it. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they take a vote, and, 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 and yeah, it was a little bit wow. of a surprise. But wow. they, they, they wanted to acknowledge all the, I guess, all the, the hard work that we, we put for, and we've, Perfect. we had contributed to the sport in the last. Congratulations. So, uh, so uh, Fernando, what's coming for next year, 2024, for you and, and Paddle? So uh, big news for next year. We, uh, we want to uh, start our, our own academy. Uh, I'm going to partner with one of my head coaches, Guillermo Cajigas. Oh, okay. And we're going to work together to open ACE. Uh, ACE is going to be um, a high-performance academy uh, that is going to mainly uh, work with uh, players that want to really take it to the next level and compete. Uh, and uh, you know our emphasis is going to be put on on kids, which we 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 know that it's it's very much needed for the sport, and and we're gonna have methodology, and we're gonna do we're gonna uh, attempt to to you know to have an academy where where we can develop players, and uh, we we have many elements. You you you'll get to know soon. Wow. You'll have more more that's news. So about that's like that. a real academy. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that would probably be the first year, uh, like yeah. a real, real academy. Wow, it's amazing. And we need to do that, I mean, for the growth of the sport here yeah. in the United States, for sure. I mean, we need juniors, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so Fernando, at the end of the, the interview, we'll go into the golden point questions. You ready? So straightforward questions, <laughs> you know. Okay, so question number one, what do you prefer uh, to play, right or left? Left. Do you prefer playing indoor or outdoor? Indoors. Power shots or finesse? Um... Finesse, but I don't have it. So <laughs> I, I've seen your smash, man. Uh, for me, it's gonna be power. <laughs> yeah. All right, favorite club? That's an easy one. That's an easy favorite one. Favorite clubs? Uh, we can all agree that uh, <laughs> it's ultra. The Hadita or by three? Uh, no, I, I re actually like the the, the Hada shot a lot, and yeah, uh, yeah I've yeah, seen I like that live. I've I, seen I, it. I, I can do it. Not, yeah, uh, bandeja or vibora? Um, I, 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 I like the Vibra more. Yeah. Uh, Good. What is your best shot? Uh, best shot, I think, is the forehand volley down nice. the middle. Wow. Uh, your worst shot? Uh, I think it's, it's potentially not a shot, but movement. I've been Good. playing. Oh, I had, a, I had a, a really bad injury on my knee okay. back in the day, and that yeah. makes me very, you know, an gotcha. easy bit movement. I need to do a lot of improvement in, in that area. Good. Who's your fi uh, favorite professional player that you love to watch? Uh, I love to... Uh, watch uh, Galan, and it's I think uh, 
is one of the most solid players that I, yeah. I like to watch. All right, favorite uh, racket? Uh, the Wilson Elite. Elite. Wow, mm. that's my that's my racket. Yeah, Good. Yes. he has chosen he, wisely. He believes he, he owns that racket. So. <laughs> I did not know that. For the record, I did not know that. (laughs) Who's your favorite partner that you love to play with? Play with a lot of people and with a lot of partners, and 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 I enjoy different things from from a lot of them. But I don't, I don't necessarily had a favorite. Oh, okay, top three. Top three. Well, well, I enjoy a lot playing with Guillermo right now. Uh, He's he's uh, he's got so much talent. He's going to continue to improve, and we get along super well. So I'm I'm extremely happy to have him as my partner. Uh, currently, uh, you know, um, also Paco for a whole year. We won everything here when the last time we decided that we were going to take it seriously, at, and it was a couple of years ago. And uh, and and I I love to play with him. I have so much fun when I play with with Paco as well. Okay, great. Oh, from one to ten, how good is Claudia on the paddle court? Oh my god! <laughs> the pressure is oh on, baby. God, right. yeah. Pressure oh my god! Right, pressure the spot, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! So uh, all I can tell you is that her rating doesn't reflect her her true <laughs> abilities. Well uh, done! Oh, well yeah. done! Yeah, yeah this guy man, is a smart he's guy, so bro. Smart. <laughs> oh man, he's good, man. Let's get good. one out of him. <laughs> all right, golden point. Who takes it? Uh, yeah, well, normally uh, it depends on where the ball's coming from, uh, who's, who's, which one of the other players is serving, if it's a left or the right player. But other than that, I love to take it every single time. Great. So tell us, uh, well, your goals for, for this coming year. Um, okay, uh, so goals again, going back to the academy, we're going to put a lot of, a lot of, of emphasis uh, on the sports part. Uh, and maybe not so much on other aspects of the business. I'm going to try to clear time now that I, we have a, a team behind me. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, goals is, is the academy, I think, is, is, is number one. And then maybe training a little bit harder to compete in some of the, the, the events, the national events that are going to be coming, like the World Championship. Take it a little bit because I don't have too many more years to compete. Uh, I want to guess, so I want to maybe give it an, uh, one or another last Enjoy. shot. Yeah, Perfect. Yeah. All right, Fernando. Uh, Fernando. Thank, thank you for coming on Pass Match Academy. Okay, we want to wish you all the luck in 2024. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you, thank guys. You. Thank you. Good job, man. <laughs> <laughs> guys, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. And remember, it's free 99. It doesn't cost you anything to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in to Paddle Smash Academy. We hope you'll find our videos informative, helpful in improving your game and learning all things paddle. So until next time, keep improving your game. And remember, learn, play, and share.